Well, yeah, and here we are on the 100th birthday of the National Parks. You know, we've done many stories about ranchers and hunters outside the park who detest wolves, but this story is about something else, the positive effects inside the park. Some say it's dramatic, even a miracle, but as always, with wolves, there's controversy. The casual visitor wouldn't notice much that's changed at Yellowstone. The scenery is still fabulous and soul-stirring. The bison or buffalo still roam. The antelope play. The steaming hot pots are still cooking. And the geysers still deliver faithfully to thousands of visitors every day. Well, I came to Yellowstone in 1994. But take a walk with Park Service biologist Doug Smith into a thicket of willows where everything has changed. This has been explosive or dramatic willow growth in here. They were just all this high. 20 years ago, the willows here were just a few inches high. Almost twice as high as I am right now. Some say it's a clear example of what biologists call a trophic cascade, ecosystem effects that trickle down to the environment from top predators like wolves. How do carnivores, wolves, cougars, and bears impact plants? They don't eat plants. They do it indirectly by impacting the animals that eat plants. In this case, it's elk. Ah, yes, elk, a tourist favorite. Those animals are cute. 20 years ago, there were about 20,000 elk in northern Yellowstone, munching up vast amounts of willows and aspens. Since then, elk numbers have been cut by about three-fourths. But that decline in elk reduced elk-eating willows, to be simple. And these willows have just shot up, exploded. Much of the vegetation there to almost nothing. Just... Which brings us to this controversial video. But as soon as the wolves arrived, even though they were few in number, they started to have the most remarkable effects. Since 2014, How Wolves Change Rivers has been watched 25 million times on YouTube giving wolves credit for creating new habitat for a host of creatures. Rabbits and mice began to rise, which meant more hawks, more weasels, more foxes, more badgers. And for stabilizing riverbanks, helping fix the rivers in their courses. So the wolves, small in number, transform not just the ecosystem. So is all that for real? It's an exaggeration. Wildlife ecologist Dan McNulty has been studying Yellowstone wolves and what they eat for 20 years. They're not supernatural predators, and people, people get that impression from films. He believes wolf lovers and wolf haters exaggerate the impact of wolves. So basically you have two different views that are wrong for the same reason. He said wolves definitely played a role in reducing the elk population, but it's an open scientific question how big a role other predators played. Grizzly bear numbers have increased. Cougar numbers have increased. And there was more aggressive elk hunting just outside the park in conjunction with drought that also occurred during the early 2000s, really was the perfect storm to drive that population down. Doug Smith agrees wolves shouldn't get sole credit, but he appreciates the YouTube video for bringing a complex topic to the public. The video that shows wolves change rivers is a little bit far flung, but there's a pearl of truth to it. The controversial video is partly based on the work of professors William Ripple and Robert Beshta from Oregon State, and they stand by the main point. In an email to KSL, Beshta said, quote, We have observed changes in streams. We expect changes in the courses of rivers to occur as plant communities improve following the return of wolves. The changes we're talking about apply only to a tiny percentage of the land, but that doesn't mean they're inconsequential. But these are what we call biodiversity hotspots. These areas provide a lot of habitat for other plants and animals. And this has impacted a lot of animals that has an outsized effect on the entire area. It's also worth noting that some streamside areas have not recovered, possibly because they don't have enough water. It's all a matter of ongoing scientific study. Professor McNulty believes it'll be years before we really know how much credit to give to the wolves. So different